This episode is sponsored by the Live Alcohol Experiment, a 30-day science-based and compassion-led journey where you learn to develop a healthier relationship with alcohol without relying on willpower. Why? Because the truth is that willpower runs out. Instead, you learn how to focus on what you gain, not what you give up, so you can feel good about the decisions you make without shame or guilt. With the 30 days of video training, virtual daily coaching, and a private and supportive community, you get that and so much more. Join us today to get happier, healthier, and to take back your life. Your live alcohol experiment starts on the 1st, so sign up at livealcoholexperiment.com. Hi, this is Annie Grace, and welcome to this Naked Run podcast, and I'm here with Andrew. Hi, Andrew. How are you? Hey, Annie. How are you doing? Thanks for having me. I'm great. I'm really good. So um, why don't you kind of take us back to the beginning in your in your journey with alcohol? Where did it all start for you? Uh, okay, it's a good question. I think in the beginning where it started was, uh, I you know, and actually this is mentioned, I think, in the first couple of chapters of your book. So it was, it was a synchronicity for me. But I think in the beginning, it started with uh, on Thanksgiving and holidays when I was a kid. I think that's when I first I always joke around that before I started drinking, I was kind of into drinking without even trying it, like around holiday times when the wine bottles would come out and that sort of thing all over the tables. I would kind of romanticize and I thought the labels looked amazing. Like I couldn't wait to try it. So for me, the um, the the actual like infatuation with it began when I was like an eight year old kid observing the adults let loose on the holiday time. That was when I started to think about it the most. And I remember even thinking like, well, when I'm older, I'm going to try this as soon as I can. I would say that's when it started. I didn't get into alcohol until I was in high school. I would say, and I didn't start uh, being a serious user of alcohol, I would say, until I was in college. Like, that's when it became sort of, uh, that's when it escalated a bit. Oh, and so like, <laughs> what what happened in college? Well, I would say like, okay, so well, I mean, backing up, like, like I said, I had always been sort of interested in trying alcohol as soon as I, I would say as soon as I had an opportunity to do so. I went went ahead and, and stole a bottle of wine from my parents. I remember it pretty pretty clearly. It was like 12 or 13. They had left the house. There was a holiday coming up. All this stuff was already out. And I took something from them. I think it was wine and had just like a couple of sips. And I was like, this is amazing. And then similarly, over the years, like in high school, I wasn't incredibly into alcohol so much, but we would steal beers. Um, the first time I got drunk was in high school. And again, I was just like, this is the most amazing thing. Because suddenly I think it was like, it's so easy to fit in. All my friends are doing it. It's cool. I feel accepted immediately. And me and my friends were really into it. We were all united and like, this is the best thing ever. And by the time I got to college, um, then it was just like, this is how we identify. Like, this is what we do pretty much. And, you know, I didn't go to a four-year school out of college. I went to a community college for two years. So during that time, it was like a lot of my friends left. And then I was in my hometown in New Jersey where I'd grown up. And it was just us that stayed there. So some of us had jobs. Some of us had jobs. We we're going to college. And that's when the drinking, I felt like really escalated to like, hey, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're in college and we're like these like crazy suburban kids with nowhere to go. Really. We're drinking like 30 cases of beer every night. We're drinking competitively. Um, we're drinking four or five nights a week. Uh, you know, it, everything we did centered around drinking and drinking the most and being the most outrageous person at the party. And it sort of just became a lifestyle thing. Like, it's just how we acted. And while we were young, I would say during that time, it was fun. Like, I always tell people, like, I mean, there were there was downsides, and I'll get to that. But, like, we weren't, like, miserable when you're young. It was fun. But the evolution of my drinking, and I didn't coin this, has always been, like, it was fun. And then it was fun with some problems. And then eventually it was just problems. But in the beginning times during those days, I think it was fun. Then it all kind of coalesced with, like, when I was 22 or so, I had just graduated college. I got a... DWI. And that was my first like, oh, man, maybe this is getting out of hand, but didn't slow me down. But that's sort of like, I think in, in during those first couple of years, it was just like, it became an identity thing, like a huge part of who I was like, we're punk rock, we drink all the time, you know, my friends drink all the time. We don't want to get jobs, we don't want to enter society. We, we identify with like rock stars and Charles Bukowski and like, kind of modeling these behaviors, like this is like the way to live, like we're against the grain, man, you know, and uh, that's kind of how it kicked into high gear where it's like just became a routine and identity, a part of who I was during that time. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I relate to that for sure. <laughs> like, absolutely. You know, just go with it. And then it's funny because it's in my experience, like now that I've detangled it, 
that was, you know, I for sure still have an identity of being like the, the one who kind of wants to instigate everything, but I just got it like confused that alcohol was the, the impetus, right? Yeah, it's funny. Like, I, I, honestly, quitting drinking, because um, it's been two year, over two years now since I've had a drink, the, the main, the, one of the hairiest parts to unravel has been the identity of it all, because I, I still identify as a person who loves to drink and party, even though I don't. And I live in the solution and I, and I, I'm, I'm not going to drink and I don't want to, but it's funny, like when this has since gone away, but especially in the beginning, in the past six, the first like six months to a year, I remember when somebody would say, I'd meet somebody new and they go, Oh, I don't drink. My first instinctual thought would be like, this person is not fun. You know, it's like, Hey, step up, take, take a step back. I don't drink either. And like, it's, it's so ingrained into my mm-hmm. identity and just the way I perceive people. A big part of it was like, changing the way I saw myself from a person who is this crazy person at the party who's can be counted on to be drinking the most, who's rallying the troops to like this other, how do I see myself now? If I'm not this, then who am I? That was like a huge leap to make as part of the kind of deconstruction of alcohol thinking process, you know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right. So what happened next? What happened next? So, I mean, it's funny, like, like I, I guess that I, I, I look at the whole thing as like, like the whole journey is, as like I said earlier, like fun, a lot of fun, then fun where I'm noticing like, oh, that was, that was weird. Like, I don't remember anything from the company holiday party and like, oh, what did I say last night? Oh, there's some problems. It's okay. You know, sweep it under the rug. Like I mentioned when I was 22, which I'm 34 now, it was a while ago, but when I was 22, I got this, I got into a drunk driving accident. I was driving my mom's car. I, uh, I, uh, drank like 15 gin and tonics at like a local pub one night and, slammed the car into a tree, got arrested, got a DWI. And at that time, you know, I was just like, oh, you know, I'm 22. Like, I don't have an alcohol problem. I'm just a crazy kid. Like, you know, what are you going to do? Like, and, and I was in these class. They made me go to like AA and um, sort of drunk driving classes in the state of New Jersey and all the other people in there. I was like, I'm not like these people. Like, you know, everybody would be saying like, oh, I, uh, you know, I ruined my life and my family doesn't talk to me anymore. And I, you know, can't hold, and I was like, I don't have these problems. I just, my problem is I shouldn't have drove. It's kind of how I looked at it. Mm-hmm. And so I kind of, I swept it under the rug, but I bring that up because that's when I really, I should have looked at that behaviorally and been like, what am I doing? Like, why am I omitting this huge problem that I caused because of my drinking, which I did not intend to do and had no control over. That was the first time I think something kind of lost my control, but I, I just, I let that happen. I moved past it. I kind of chalked it up to being young and dumb and moved on with my life. And I think over the, my mid twenties, I, I kind of got into, well, then I was like, I need to have a job. And I, and through a series of events, I got into like the corporate lifestyle. So I was then for a little while, I was a sales rep. I was like a marketing person for this big educational technology company. And part of my role during those times was to go around and it was very customer service oriented. So I had to like, I was sort of responsible for taking customers out, like give these presentations and then take customers out to dinner. And I was always interfacing with people and I was always the one making sure that they had a good time. So then it became part of my lifestyle to like, to be drinking. It was like part of, again, it was part of who I was. And I remember during those times, I look at them as good times. Like I'm going out with these customers and I have this job that I'm super proud of and we're making all these inroads. But at the same time, like things would happen where it's like, okay, if I I look back on it, I didn't see a Sunday for years. Every single Sunday, I would just be, it just didn't exist. There was no Sunday. It just didn't exist. I, uh, I felt, you know, I never really was like healthy whenever I would. And it's funny, like, you don't think about these things. I think when you're in the midst of just kind of high functioning drinking, but I would go to the doctors and they, you know, they do your blood results to go, this is a little high, that's high, your cholesterol is high. And I, you know, I was like, but I have a relatively healthy lifestyle outside of the fact that I drink like a lunatic all the time, but I didn't put the two together that, uh, you know, that, that, that these were related. And over time, I just continued to just, I would say multiple nights a week, I drank pretty consistently, but it was part of my lifestyle. And I didn't see any immediate negative impacts, meaning like I still kept the job. I was pretty high functioning. I was well liked. I had a girlfriend. You know, it's not like these things that I think traditionally people think about when they think of alcoholics weren't really happening to me necessarily. And so I didn't see anything. And the way it sort of coalesced to having to stop was I, there became a point where it was like, finally, I was just drinking all the time. And it was, it was, everything had turned dark. Like it had become just problems. And they have this saying, I don't know who, who I mean by they, but I've heard this saying in my reading of alcohol quit literature that, you know, you can't unpickle a cucumber. Like once you get to that place, you're not, you, you always want to go backward, but you can't. And I think for a, a few years in the, in the late stages of my drinking, I was trying to chase what it was like in the early days where I didn't really notice the effects, but 
then, yeah, it's like, then I started like gaining tons of weight and I started, you know, the doctors were telling me that there was something wrong with the, my, my liver and the lipids were all messed up. And it was like unusual for my age. And I had these dark bags under my eyes. I was depressed all the time. Um, my hangover started to increase. So like I would be hungover. I used to be just hungover every Sunday that didn't exist, but then it became like, once I entered my thirties, like Sunday and Monday, uh, you know, I'm just completely like, not really my myself anymore. I'm barely could get out of bed. And it all kind of started to hit me when I realized that like, I was also pretty depressed. And so I started reaching out and being like, I think I am depressed. And, and, and I would not associate that with my drinking, which was still going on it, for the decade that I drank, it never slowed down. So like, I just drank all the time for like a decade straight is kind of what I think. And then I would say, you know, I'm de- but now I'm like depressed and I spend a lot of time in bed and I'm gaining all this weight. And I remember when I first, I talked to the doctor and I just said, I, I think I'm, I went to like a physical or something. I was like, I think I'm clinically depressed. And they were like, okay, well, let's go through your lifestyle. And then I went and I was like, oh yeah. And I, you know, I drink like 80 beers every weekend. And they're like, well, let's start there. You know? And so that I, that was like when I first started thinking like, okay, maybe like the alcohol has something to do with the fact that I'm miserable. And then COVID happened, the pandemic happened. I live in New York city. And so during that time I had to go, like I left the city. My friend had an open apartment in this beach town in New Jersey. I went to the beach town and during that time I didn't drink because I was alone. And um, I always had these weird rules where like, I don't drink alone though. You know, I kind of had these qualifications. So I went there, I was alone. I did drink once on a zoom call like this with all my friends. And we were like, Oh, we're drinking. It's zoom. It's like a snow day. But when I hung up the call, I was like super drunk and super depressed and super alone. And I didn't want that feeling to come back. And I got scared off by it. So during that time, I was like dry. Like I would say like the summer of 2020, I just wasn't drinking. I didn't have a plan to stop drinking. I didn't, I just wasn't doing it. And I felt amazing. Like the weight started to come right off. Skin cleared up, sleep went back to normal. And I was like, it kind of dawned on me like, man, like it's like, I think my depression evaporated. I was like, I think that this is all simply because of, uh, of alcohol. But then I, when I came back to the city and things started reopening, I went back to my old lifestyle pretty much immediately. And every, all the problems came back. But then this time I kind of had this knowledge, like, oh, I remember that I was okay for a little bit and now everything's happening again. And, and then I just like, you know, I had a few scenarios happen where it was like particularly bad. I showed up kind of drunk to one of my dad's birthday parties. And uh, it was like one of those like health teen commercials where it's like, you can't even be here. You're drunk. Like everybody knew I was a mess and I felt uh, embarrassed. And that's when I just decided to, to like, maybe, maybe it's time to give it up for good. Somewhere, like, I think it was around my 31st birthday. I was like, maybe I'll just go through my thirties, not being this person. And that's when I read your book. So the reason I, I was so excited to talk to you is because like I, your book to me is the Bible of, of, for me of not drinking anymore, because I had tried a lot of things. Like I had, like I had gotten the DWI and like, I'd been around the block. I'd been to AA meetings. I had read the big book. I had this stuff just didn't work for me, but your book kind of introduced me to a, uh, I would call it a modern approach. to thinking about the substance itself as part of the problem. Like it's not just all on me. Like it is a dangerous addictive substance. Maybe we should consider that. Um, The brainwashing, which was a huge part of my problem is like, I can't have fun without alcohol. Uh, There's no way to walk down the street in New York city without wanting to get a drink. And um, it helped me sort of first, like start to realize like, oh man, like I'm not even really thinking consciously about any of these decisions. Like a lot of what's happening is just, it's just programmed. Like, I'm just like, a, I'm like a robot for this. So that I started to read that. I talked to a, you know, a therapist. I started, I, I joined a couple like quit groups online, like kind of secular groups that got together to talk about this kind of stuff. And then that's when I just kind of started, I was like, okay, I'll, I'm going to do, I'm going to read, I'm going to read a chapter of this book every day and I'm going to your book and I'm going to do a, uh, like a 90 day cleanse and we'll see how that feels. And I would say like during that first few months, where I'm reading the literature, I'm talking to other people, I'm connecting with people who don't drink. And I knew I had a goal. I, 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 life eventually, like the, the, the experience of not drinking became better than my life than when it was drinking. And like, then I kind of just experienced like, why, the, why would I go back? It just seemed insane. Like I, I reached like a tipping point where I was like, well, I'm not going to go back now. This is, this would be, uh, it would be nuts to go back. And I've honestly been living in that ever since because the, um, like one thing I just just add that a, a few people that I know that ha- that are sober had told me that you know when you quit your life just kind of gets better and better it's it's kind of, it's kind of amazing and it's not always like what you imagined it would be like but it, it it is really good and I will say that like the thing that keeps surprising me since I stopped drinking in September of 2020 is that things just continue to improve and all the things that I thought I couldn't do 
like I had all like you call them like limiting beliefs when I was when I was younger like I can't do this I can't do that but it's like well you can't do anything if you're if you're drunk all the time and you're hung over all the time and you're depressed all the time but I've like in the past two years done a lot of things that I never ever ever thought I could do and I'm not special it's just like it's really just a shift in the thinking and that's kind of what I find to be the most amazing part about the whole thing <laughs> that's so awesome so what are some of those things well okay well we'll start with like physical stuff so I was like uh I know I smoked cigarettes and I never exercised and I, uh, and I, cause I drank all the time. I was like a person at the bar and, uh, I never thought I could run. I used to sort of resent people who ran, uh, probably because I think often when you're in the alcoholic mindset, you see other people doing things, you're like, nah, like they're losers. But I, you know, since then I've started running, I run like a 10 K pretty much every day. Like initially when I first quit drinking, I lost like 50 pounds. Like I was way overweight. And so, you know, I never thought I would like run a mile or two miles or, you know, and it's like, then these things just became easier over time. So the running was one thing and just had a huge impact on like, oh, well, now that I'm running and I'm, I'm a healthy person and I exercise, like, I don't want to go back to like not being able to live this way. It feels good to live this way. So it's like you build that kind of bank of things that are better than living in the, in the dark. And that, like, I had always wanted to do, like, I had always been like a theater person and I'd always wanted to do comedy. And when I was younger, I did like a lot of improv comedy in New York City. And then I moved to San Francisco for a few years. And during the years of my like corporate drinking, schmoozing, I really didn't do anything that related to like what I'd always wanted to do since I was a kid. I didn't express myself artistically in any way. But when I stopped drinking, I was like, I think I'm just gonna start doing stand up comedy, which was kind of, you know, I was 31. So it was like, okay, I guess I'll just start doing this now. But I started going to open mics in in New York City, like right around the time that the pandemic restrictions were lifting and stuff. And, you know, in that time, I've pretty much become a full time stand up comedian. I do it every night. I kind of like I'm not huge or anything, but I'm booked all over the city. And it's like just the fact that I can get up in front of an audience every night. And I've been working on this thing for a couple of years, whereas two years ago, it didn't it it wasn't even something I did, period. It just didn't exist. You know, I went from trying it to like actually doing it in a professional way where I'm getting paid to do it. Um, in a very short window of time. So like that was just, that's been kind of amazing because the being able to do things that you, you love, you start to realize like, this is why I was kind of drinking in the first place. You know, it's like, because in, instead of exploring my passions or like letting myself be myself, I was just kind of clouding myself with booze. And that's the thing that actually keeps you in the dark. And once you have that veil lifted, you're kind of free to be whoever you want. And the, the things that we, I used to find fearful, I would be scared of, like they're no longer like challenges don't seem nothing seems as like horrifying as it did when you're in that alcohol mindset, you know, mm-hmm. because when you're in that mindset, it's like, I can't do it. I'm not even going to try. I'll just drink. Now I feel worse. And it's for me, it's always cyclical. When you're out of the cycle, it's like, oh, it'll be hard to go stand in front of a room full of strangers and maybe I won't get last and everybody will hate me. But like, I'll be OK. I won't be hung over for four days straight. I won't hate myself. Like you can I find that things are so much easier to overcome. And once you overcome them with a clear mindset, you never have to look back. It's like I did that. I've been there. I know what to expect. And you can move on. And like, I think being free from just what I would call like just like this alcohol mindset has enabled me to do some of these things. So that, that's those are the main highlights over the past couple of years, for sure. <laughs> oh, that's so awesome. That is so, so cool. That's great. I love how you say like building, building this bank of things. And, you know, that's been really true for me too. It's like the longer that you're away from drinking, the more things you sort of add into your life or get curious about trying or have energy to try. And then all of a sudden you're like, Oh, wow. I, I have a friend, Mike, who, um, I met him and he was a drinker and then we got to know each other and he ended up reading my book. And he came up to me the next time we saw each other and, and he's like, Hey, I stopped drinking. I was like, Oh, that's amazing. And so then like a year later, he's like, Hey, it's been a year. And so he was sending me like videos every, every year on his year for a yeah. long time. He just text me a video. And one video was so funny. It was five years. And he's like, here I am. I just cut up a trail. There's my mountain bike. I have my yoga mat. I'm going to go do some yoga. Like, who is this hippie? Like, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> it was just so funny. <laughs> Uh, well, it's, it, that's like, it's such a remarkable, th- I have a similar story that with my, my friend, Jerry, like, you know, I kind of omitted when I first, so my best friend, my drinking buddy, like for like the person I drank with the most over this 10 year time period when I was really drinking and some of my heaviest and most insane nights of drinking, um, were with my friend, my best friend, Jerry, and he got sober before me. Like he, you know, and he went the route, like he went to AA, he got in the program. He's, 
he's getting, you know, he, it's weird when like, when you're like tightly aligned with like a drinking partner where you guys have had all these drinking experience, it's like, wow, you have a problem. Like good thing. Nothing happened. You know, like, look, I'm okay. But I, I couldn't help but notice that like, he just became a completely different person. I, and I had this moment of realization when I was watching him run the New York marathon a few years back. This is before I quit drinking. And I was just like, what is going on? Like the dissonance of like, how is Jerry? This is a guy who I've spent most nights of my life staying up till seven in the morning, drinking and chain smoking with. How is he running the New York city marathon right now? And like seeing his transformation really, really made me realize that there was something to this. Like I, it, cause it's like, it's so real when you know somebody that was somebody else and then went through a metamorphosis and now they're this different person. And the only thing really that changed is that they have a different attitude towards how they treat themselves towards drinking. And um, the, for me, that was the same thing. It was like a huge catalyst. It was like amazing to see him change. And that kind of got me thinking like, man, maybe I should give it up to, you know what I mean? That was like really the first thought it's uh, and then since then, I mean, even it's like, it's such a, it's such a thing of attraction. Like, you know, I don't, I don't know if you noticed this, but when, now that I've stopped, a lot of people always ask me, like, like if you ever meet somebody at a party and they go, I, they, oh, you don't drink anymore? They're like, the first thing they usually say is like, I wish I could stop. What's your, you know, I, I should probably stop too. Or like, I don't have an alcohol problem, but I wish I could stop. And um, I I've, I've know a lot of people that have like texted me or been like, I'm going to stop drinking too. Can you read me, send me some pointers? I will say your book is always the first book that I send them. It's like, and I'm like, oh, Yo, you can start here, read this every day. But um you know, it's, 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 it's cool to see other people then go through that. And that's part of what like keeps me going too, is like, I know that there's people that were inspired by me. I was inspired by my friend, Jerry, we all communicate. And it's like, we're all kind of doing this together, which is, which is a cool aspect of uh, quitting that I think people don't normally consider. So. Yeah. It's, it's so yeah. true. And it's so cool. Yeah. And it's amazing. And it, it like, it, it's interesting for me because I feel like you always have this idea of who you think you can be. Right. And there's a, there's a self inside of us, whether we're trying to like block ourselves from this person or not, but I think it's like our truest and best self. And they're there all the time sort of saying, Hey, I'm here. Like, you know, you could be me. And I always thought it's going to be so much hard work to become that version of myself, that version of myself who exercises regularly, who, you know, had a salad for lunch today, who, you know, meditated, like all of these things like that, that version sounds boring and not fun. And she's a real drag and she's going to be like, and so I had this resistance. Right. And so I, but then you stop drinking and little by little, all of the things that need to be in place to just like function, you realize well, you have to find healthy ways to just function. You have to find healthy ways to, you know, feel good and to get energy and to do all this stuff. And then like little by little over time, you look back and you're like, wow, I am a radically different person. And I think the most interesting thing about all of that is it's not that you are a different person. It's, it's actually, I think you're who you you've always been. You just seem <laughs> yeah. to be like covering it up with all the booze. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I completely agree. It's, it's like, I, I get like, you know, I went back to doing the things I did before I started drinking pretty much. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, when I was like a little theater kid running around the house and like now years later, I'm kind of doing that stuff again. Because yeah, it's like, this is who I am. I actually feel more like myself now than I ever have in my entire life. But you have this identity. It's like, no, I'm this, I'm this depressed, cynical, sad, dark person who drinks all the time. And I'm, I'm, I'm punk rock. I, I, you know, I don't know how else to describe the way I thought of myself, but it's like, that's not really you. And it's funny because there is, that's the thing. That's like the real trick of the whole bit is that it's really not the work, putting the work is the, is the, is the undoing of the, of the brainwashing, in my opinion, is like, the work is like realizing, hey, like when I walk by, you know, a pub and I and I I I get this desire to go in and even when it, it still happens today, it's not like I don't get these like thoughts or urges, but it's like I recognize that if I have a desire to go sit in a pub and pound beers, it's because I'm having some sort of positive memory or association that's triggering this kind of thought, like from like that no longer exists because every, like you can't unpickle a cucumber over time. You know, you're not going to go back to the way it was to like being 19 with your friends drinking. It's like all this stuff had happened. So it's like undoing, like realizing that I have all these associations and these kind of behaviors and these patterns that are in my brain. I have to undo them. There's all this brainwashing, like you mentioned, of, of, of like the, of like, like, why did I think like alcohol was so cool when I was eight years old at my Thanksgiving? Like, because my parents made it seem cool. Like it was the only time when they were not stressed out really was when they were like, it was like a holiday and the booze came out. It's like, oh, you start to associate like adults relax when this happens. And 
all this stuff, you know, as you get older, it's just in your head. And the work for me was like identifying those things. Like, oh, maybe I think this way because of this or like, and, and picking them out and undoing it. And then from there, it's like running and doing things you're passionate about and living every day without booze. Like it actually, it hasn't felt like work. It's like enjoyable. Like the, the, the it's amazing what you can do. It's just when it's just, it's like you want everything to change. So you try to change everything and you can't. But all you have to do is make one change, which is a mindset change and everything will change, which is like, I just think the most profound thing that you really can't experience until you take the plunge and try to change this, this kind of, I just call it like a tangling of, of, of ugh, stuff in your brain about booze, you know? <laughs> yeah, and it's so, it's so interesting because then the change, it does happen in ways that you didn't really expect. It, it almost, it feels so easy. It almost like sneaks up on you and you're like, wait a second. Yeah. How did this happen? Who is who is this person? That's so awesome. It's really interesting. Also, what you just said about um, about Thanksgiving being the time where the booze came out and then people were celebrating and not stressed. And I I feel like that is, you know, so, so fascinating to unpack those positive associations around alcohol. Like we're, we're, oh, okay. well, of course, like they were off for a few days, they're getting together with family. Like Thanksgiving seems like it was probably an enjoyable time in your house and, you know, all of these things. And then the one thing that you as a kid perceive as different, oh, well, they're drinking, right? Like, and so yeah. it's so fascinating when we go back and be like, oh, oh, I see where that came from. I see how I made that association. I see that, that, you know, made sense in the time. Um, and then comparing it to our own experience of like, well, for me, I, I, you know, I, I was the other day, there was a bunch of us, um, around at a house and like, we were all, a few, few friends were staying at Airbnb for this conference we were at. And then a bunch of other people came over and everybody brought tons of booze and we're all sitting around this table. And, um, and you know, everybody's like, Oh, you're, you're really cool about people not drinking. And I was like, yeah, of course I'm cool. Like, why wouldn't I be? I was like, what, do you, what do you think I feel when, when you drink and I don't, and they're like, Oh, well, I guess I just think, I just think you probably feel sorry for yourself or you feel bummed that you're, you don't get to be drinking. And I'm like, Oh no, no, no. Like I, I look at this and I'm like, gosh, I'm glad I'm not there anymore. Like that's, yeah. The entirety of my feelings is just being so glad I'm not there anymore. And, and like, I've done it. Like I, I did it and I decided to stop because I did it. <laughs> you know, because it didn't do all the things that I thought it was doing. And so it's, it's just such an interesting, but you're right. It is this big detangling and this big reframe. And I think the danger is that our examples historically, and I think this is really changing because you know sobriety is becoming trendy and sober curious is becoming trendy, but our examples historically of people who didn't drink were people who wished they could have been drinking, you know, and yeah. therefore were miserable. And so that's kind of the paradigm that we have, you know. Yeah. I mean, that's like the dry mentality. And that's the difference between like you know, not, not trying not to drink and then like living in a way where you just don't even consider it because your life is so like building that bank of good stuff that you do that like, why would I want to chip away at like my health and my passions and all the things I built that I couldn't do while I was drinking, you know, it starts to overtake that. And that's so true too. It's like, you know, I think again, early on, like one of the most profound things you realize when you stop is I always were, I struggled with that in the beginning. I was like, I'm never gonna be able to go to a party and have fun again. You know, like it's, it's because I'm associating booze with, with having fun. And it's funny that like, you know, the first, I always like the first time I went to, let's say like a wedding without drinking was profound because it's like, people were like, how are you going to get through this? But you know, it's even for everybody else. I mean, I hate to like, be like this person that's objectively looking at everybody. I'm not judging, but I'm saying like, you're everybody drinking. It seems to me in my experience, having not drink, drank the last couple of years and you're seeing everybody go crazy. It's, it seems like it's fun for about 20 minutes. Like that yeah. first drink, everyone's laughing and they're having fun and they loosen up. But then, they, I mean, like clockwork, it just, it all gets people get out of hand, people get sweaty, they start becoming incoherent, they're, not, they're no longer seem like they're having fun. And then the next day they go, oh, that was the best wedding, what a great night. But like, I watched you not have fun, you know what I mean? And I had, I, I had a great time. You know, you don't really, you, you, you look back on it after a crazy night and go, oh, that was so much fun. And it's like, what was fun about it? I, I I did that a lot in my life. Like after I stopped, I thought about like, remember that time I went to Atlantic City? What a great night. You know, we drank on the beach all night. And then I'll, 
now looking back on things like why was that a great night like i i slept on a beach i you know i was uh i was hung over for three days afterward i spent all my you know you don't really you, you just tell yourself these stories to think that it's like all going great and it's so much fun but it's it's really not and like that like, like kind of like you're saying like I, I when i'm at a party i'm always grateful that i'm not doing that i'm like you know you guys you know, you're, it's like, I had read this somewhere. I don't know if it was in your, I'm sorry. I don't know. I don't know your book word for word, but if there was, there was a, uh, <laughs> there was a, it was in someone's book. There was this quote, actually it might be a Ram Dass quote, but the quote was like, you know, sometimes when you're in like a, um, like a, a mindset where it's like, all you see is dark clouds and gray. And like, you, you think that's life, but mm -hmm. you don't realize that there's a blue horizon on the, you just have to get out of this cloud. When you're in the cloud, you think the world is the cloud. But they're like, you know, and that's kind of how I feel when I go to these people are like, you're not having fun. It's like, I'm aware of the horizon. You know, it's not, it's, it's like, you guys are just in this cloud, which might seem like fun, but it's a dark, it's a dark cloud. And so, uh, yeah, for sure. That's also been pretty profound too. It's just like, I don't know. I always, it's so nice being able to like leave a party too. Like, you know, there always comes to a point where like, I can tell that nobody's coherent anymore and that people are, you know, just, just like out of hand. And I'm like, I'm just going to go home and I'm going to sleep normal. And I'll wake up the next day and I won't miss anything and I'll feel, you know, good about myself. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm with you there. And also it doesn't, you know, when, when you go through the, I, I think a big part of it too, is like when you're partying and you, and you, you think you're having fun, you kind of repeat these mistakes. It chips, it, for me, it chipped away at my self-esteem. Like I may not realize it, but I would wake up and be like, Ugh, like I'm the worst, like, and just kind of move on. I love waking up with like sleeping with a clear like a good conscience. Like I didn't do anything. I didn't say anything. I remember everything I did. I, uh, I, I had normal fun at the wedding and I'm going to wake up tomorrow and I'm not going to wonder if I'm the worst, like I'm good. And I think that people that, that if you do that enough over a period of time, like waking up and being like, Oh, what was that? Oh, well, got to move. It chips away at your value, like how you perceive yourself. And I used to really hate myself towards the end of my drinking. Like I just, just the culmination of all those years of doing that, of telling yourself stories, like, I just hate myself. And now I couldn't feel, you know, I feel more up. Like, I feel totally opposite. Like, I'm happy with myself because I built up a bank of like, you know, like sleeping with a lighter pillow. Like, there's no more lies. You know, it's, it's all, I don't lie to myself anymore. I don't lie to other people. Just like, it's, um, it's all good now. So that's a long winded way of saying, I agree. Like, it, <laughs> it's easier to go to parties now. It's still fun. <laughs> yeah, I love that so much. It's so good. And, and I totally, I totally agree with how we feel so differently about ourselves over time. I think that's that's really true. And I remember the first few times I was around people who were drinking and I, I just was like, so curious. Like I just watched them like, what do you feel? What do you feel? Like, are you having fun? Is it fun? You know, like just like really curious because you kind of forget how drinking feels a little bit, I think. I mean, maybe. Um, yeah. And And I just like see like nothing and then kind of the, change in the eyes a little bit and you're like huh and then with with this experience last week you know like you said 20 30 minutes into it everybody's rowdy and ruckus and then I'm still like ready to hang out for a long period <laughs> of time and all of a sudden some somebody's laying on the ground with their feet up on the chair snoring yeah yeah, yeah. Else is like you know like and I'm just like what is happening like you guys um but anyway it's 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 fine too and I think it's it is just it's such a whenever especially in the early days whenever I'd be in this like oh am I going to want to am I going to be triggered I would just really look at it just like how curious can I get how much of a social experience <laughs> experiment is this you know how can I and I remember just watching people and being like yeah, it does not look like you're having more fun. Mm -hmm. Maybe at first, maybe at first for a few minutes, but then it just really doesn't look like it. So it's just fascinating. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's 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 like in the beginning of a party, you people use alcohol to break down that. Like, you know, it's it's weird in the beginning. You're in a room and everybody's trying to be sociable, and people have their own anxieties that they bring to the table, and they, they drink and they loosen that stuff up. But if but you could still get there without booze. Like I still get to a place where I'm like, all right, I'm loose. I'm here. I'm present. And uh, it, it's just, it's not the same route as like taking a drink, but I, I get, I get there. And then once I'm there, I'm in it. Like I'm, I still have fun. And I think actually a pretty remarkable thing about, like I said, I, I hang out in bars pretty much every night of the week because I do, I do the stand-up comedy stuff. And people are always like, how do you, how do you hang out here? And like, how do you be around all this booze? Or like, you know, I still go to parties all the time where everybody's drinking. And it's like, 
I don't even think about it anymore. Like I, I don't, I, cause like, I don't, I, like, I really don't even think about it. Like, I don't, I, I, I'll, I'll bring like a non-alcoholic drink or like, I'll put something in a glass that, you know what I mean? Just for the social sort of ritual of the whole thing. But I don't, I don't, besides that, I don't like, I'll notice other people are maybe you're getting drunk, but I don't think about it in terms of myself. Like I'm just like, I don't even think about it. And the reason I bring that up is because I don't mean to say like, oh, I'm so great. I don't think about it. Like you don't think about it because it's not important to you having fun. Like it's not, it's not necessary for you to be yourself at a party. Like I'll, I'll still leave up. I'll still, this was, I, I always tell those people and they think I'm joking, but it's like, I never really realized that you could have fun without alcohol. The thought had never occurred to me. Like I, I was one of those people that was like, you know, this party, there better be tons of booze or I'm not coming, you know, stock up on the wine. Like, that's what I was like. Like, you know, I, yeah, I'm coming home, make sure there's a 30 case in the fridge. But it's like, I still have so much fun. I'll wake up and like, that was an awesome party. And I don't even, these days, I don't even really think about how I didn't have a drink. In the beginning, I did, of course. But it, 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 it is possible <laughs> to have fun without booze. And I really didn't know that until I experienced it for myself. So <laughs> you stop noticing it at parties after a while. <laughs> Yeah, totally. Absolutely. Well, this has been so awesome, Andrew. So let me ask you kind of two final questions, which sure. is, first of all, where can people find you if they want to come see you or like, uh, experience? Oh yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. If you want to check out my comedy stuff, you can check me out on, uh, just andrewginsburg.com and my show in New York city is called the village idiot comedy show, village idiot, NYC.com or on uh, Instagram at insta Ginsburg, G I N S B E R G. And, uh, we do shows all the time and would love to see anybody. Also happy to chat about not drinking stuff too. It doesn't have to be uh, comedy related. I, I love talking about this kind of stuff. So <laughs> oh, that's, awesome. that's really cool. Yeah. We'll put all that in the show notes too. So that's really, <laughs> really cool. And um, all right. So let me ask you the question I like to end with, which is if you were going to go back in time to yourself who, you know, really couldn't get out of bed and, and was feeling depressed and like, you know, just lethargic and all of those things. And you were going to tell him what life is like now, what would you say? Um, I think what I would say is, you know, you, <laughs> and I say this just because if anybody's listening, this is like what I would, if you're in this situation, what I would have liked to hear is if someone, maybe my future self or someone say to me is like, you don't have to live this way. Mm -hmm. Like you think you have to live at that time. I thought I, I didn't think there was another way to live. It just, the thought didn't occur to me. Like, this is just, this is how I live. I drink. I feel like this, I do this, this is the kind of person I am. I'll never quit smoking. I'm just... It's like, but like, it's okay. You, you don't have to, you can, you can be anybody you want to be. You can, you know, you're, you're, you're free to, you know, you're free. You're not in confined. You're not in chains. Like you don't like, you know, one day you'll realize this and you'll be free of where you're at now, but right. You're, you're keeping yourself in, in a cave living like this. And I just want you to know that it doesn't have, you have an option. You can opt out. It's okay. And it'll be all right. If you do choose to opt out, life will actually be better. I wish I knew that then. <laughs> oh, it's so good. It's so good. And it's so true. I think so many of us, like we just, I thought that for sure in like the corporate world, which was where all my drinking was like, oh, this is just how it is. And I actually remember somebody coming up to me a, a few years after I'd written my book, who was an ex coworker, And he, he read my book. He's like, oh my gosh, Annie, like, I don't have to do it. Like I can just go and not have a beer. I was like, he's like, it blew my mind. This idea that I just didn't actually have to drink every time it was offered at every single work yeah. event. It's like, I know yeah. like, it's so weird, but it's so obvious in hindsight. I love that. Yeah. It's like, it's all in our heads, you know, like the, the thought that we can't say no, or like we have to, it's like, there's really not, there's, it's just you, you, you're free to opt out. And uh, when you do, things are better than you ever expected. So yeah. So true. Well, this has just been awesome, Andrew. So fun to talk to you. And um, yeah, it's been a blast. Yeah, we'll talk to you soon. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Hey, I'm so excited because we are literally just about to start another live alcohol experiment. And if you don't know about the alcohol experiment, you need to literally drop everything right now and go to livealcoholexperiment.com. Here's the thing. This is a 30-day challenge and it's designed to interrupt your patterns and put you back in touch with the best version of you. You'll know it's that version that's living the most joyful life. That version that doesn't need alcohol to relax or have a good time. And that version that's having more fun and is more peaceful 
than ever. Again, it's just a 30-day challenge. It's live every single day. It's starting on the 1st, so hurry up. Join me at livealcoholexperiment.com. And as always, rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast as it truly helps the message reach somebody who might need to hear it today.